Hi all and welcome to Carport Woodcraft. In today's video we're going to be making a very special build for me which is a baby changing unit for my daughter's baby, so my grandchild. First thing we're going to do is go out into the wood yard, search for some pieces of timber to do this project because everything needs to be done on a really tight budget and we need to spend the minimal that we can do. So I'll show you the project and then we'll get on with it. And as you can see then guys, it's a beautiful oak and MDF baby changing unit. And no, that's not blue, it's actually teal. Everything was built around the size of the changing mat and it's at the correct height for my daughter's waist. We have two drawers. The top one has a separate compartment in. And the bottom drawer is just an open space. And then we have two little cube storage areas. Solid oak on the top. Oak MDF veneer for the drawer fronts. And we've used an old reclaimed door here for the top because it was nice and shiny and good for wiping down. So without further ado, we'll get straight into the video. Please don't judge me guys on the same old storage spot. I know down here somewhere, there's a, I can see that, there's a perfect piece of timber. That I need for the top of the changing unit, as you can see, nice and shiny material. It's an old door, what reclaimed off a, a job a few months ago, but it's got lovely shiny material on it. It's, it's like a malamine type stuff, but a high gloss finish. Perfect for poopy, bums, uh, anything gets spilled on that. Quick wash away. So I will sort this tomorrow. I'm gonna take the measurements of the changing mat. 760 long and 470 wide. I'm gonna write that down on the diagram. That's left a lovely nice clean cut. Last mite I cut over at the mitre saw for the oak trim and I've just done a dry fit using these corner clamps. Everything looks like it's coming together nicely. Now I'm going to use a Festool Domino to attach these pieces of oak to the base and that should make everything nice and strong and really well aligned. So there it is then guys, all clamped up and ready to dry overnight. So obviously I've overdone it with the clamps there, but I think I've got it just about perfect. But like I say, I found myself fiddling a bit too much, so I, I had a word with myself and said look, you're not going to get perfection. But I think I'm pretty close to it, so we'll have a look anyhow when it's all dried up overnight and see how close I did get. Generally people do the corner splines on a table saw, however I like to use a right angle jig and all I do basically is brad that down, or you can use double sided sticky tape, put that down on your weight bench, pull your weight piece into there so it sits in nice and safely and secure, and then you can set your depth on your biscuit jointer and just plunge in directly over the corner. So 
for the splines, I'm going to be using this piece of hardwood here, which I found in my off-cut pile. I think it's a piece of mahogany. I might be wrong. Uh, but anyway, it's a nice piece of contrasting wood to go with the oak. I just need to knock about half a millimetre off it. So I've double-sided taped it to this piece of MDF because it's a bit too thin for my thickness there. And then I'm going to feed it through once or twice, take it off, test it, and then it might need a little bit of sanding. This piece of MDF has got a really nasty edge on it, look at that. It's like wheat bix this MDF, it's terrible. So I'm going to rip this down again, put a clean edge on it. We've got the two side pieces, we've got the bottom and the central shelf, and then for the top, because we ran out of MDF, we've just got two central, sorry, two support pieces, which will do just fine. And we're going to attach it with some brad nails and some glue, and then we're going to secure everything up with some countersink screws, and then we can fill them holes, because this part is going to be painted, so you won't see any of the fixings at all. Right then, Lily's behind the camera, so if the camera angle's dodgy, that's why. So what we've done <laughs> is we've cut four spacers. I'm just gonna clamp these into position, and this is gonna ensure that the shelf fits exactly in the halfway position. And then we're just gonna glue, screw, and that's the unit constructed in its basic form, and then we can start adding the nice parts. It doesn't have to be. No, no, that's fine. Watch your big belly on the table. <laughs> The centre panel was just fastened in with screws and as you can see I've filled all the screws now. When that's painted you'll never know they're there. These two dividers are getting pocket holed and a little bit of glue and what I've done is pocket holes are just on one side so for instance this side here is where the, the drawer is going to be so you'll never see these pocket holes and that side's going to be open and that's nice and clean. I've got myself a space here which I'll just put there and then when I drive these pocket hole screws in it'll work. this piece won't drive over too far and it will keep them central dividers nice and lined up. Everything's prepped for painting now, so we've sanded, filled, sanded, filled a couple of times to make sure that none of the screw holes are visible. And then we've applied 17 coats of Zinzabin primer onto the MDF. No, I'm talking absolute crap. When you're painting panels of MDF like this, you don't need any primer, you can go straight on with a good quality top coat. And I'm using a silk emulsion 
and honestly you get a great coverage looks great uh, yes if you're doing the edges you'll you might want a primer and do several more coats but honestly there's no magic to it it's that easy I also use one of these sash brushes and they get right into the corners and you get a really good coverage a good quality firm roller plenty of paint on on your first coat finish it off all going the same way Nice snug fit. Both the compartments that are having the drawers in them are having a 45 degree chamfer on the inside. I'm going to be using the router with a 45 degree chamfer bit in. The only for the drawers is simply pocket holes for either side, plenty of glue, and then a bottom put straight onto the underside of the drawer. When using pocket holes, clamp the snot out of them so they don't move. The bottom is simply glued and brad nailed straight to the bottom of the box. To remove the excess off the bottom of the box, I'm just going to use a block plane. You could use a, a router with a flush trim bit, but I don't want to listen to the screaming rabbit today. I'm going to finish it off with a bit of sanding. Ready for painting. Draw front to the 9mm oak veneered MDF. Really nice stuff, this with a good veneer on it. Keeps the cost down as well, not having to use solid oak. Also, we've got some solid American white oak for the trim, which is gonna go around the draw fronts, and then that way we can make these a little bit oversized and plane them down so we get that perfect reveal all the way around. Each corner is simply gonna be done with a 45 degree miter and all glued on the PDO. Always handy to have a vice as an extra pair of hands. Last piece going on. Just had a good look around in the wood yard outside and managed to find four pieces of oak which are going to be good for the, the frame of the unit. And we've got this small piece here which will do for the legs, four little stumpy legs. And then we've got these three pieces here, which should do the apron and the skirt, i.e. the adjoining pieces which attach the legs together. I'm just going to mill that up now. I'll leave that off camera and then I'll get back to you when we're doing the joinery to put this together. So we've built the oak down, as you can see, for the base. These are the legs. This is one piece put together already with a stretcher and the two feet or legs, whatever you want to call them. Here's a little template made out of MDF. So all I have to do is place that on my piece of oak, draw around it, then I can cut them out, and then we're gonna use dominoes to put these together. You can also use pocket holes on the inside if you wanted, but you need to get some hardwood pocket hole screws, otherwise you'll split the oak. Or dowels would be a good option. Uh, the only thing with dowels is loads of marking out and needing to be more accurate and what have you. I ain't got the time for that today, so I'm using the domino.
So I'm putting the draw fronts on and what I'm doing is I'm going for the elongated holes. That way I can adjust the draw front backwards and forwards. Because I'm recessing it to this point where the chamfer ends, just to fine tune it I'll need to be able to pull it backwards and forwards. These are the holes I'm using, these elongated ones. When your screw's in there, you can see you can adjust it backwards and forwards. Just gives you that little bit more flexibility. Another good reason not to put the back of your cabinet on until you've completed. Last thing, just so it makes things like this a lot easier. And come round the back. tried this before but I'm just going to try some super glue around the edge and see if that holds the draw front on because sometimes when I use hot glue it's a bit too thick and it pushes the draw front further out which I don't want to do in this case I've got a couple of packers at the bottom I'm just using my fingernails for the sides We'll see if that holds, it might not. And now I'm just going to drive some screws. I've got to be a bit careful because it's only 9mm. So we're going through with some... These are 24mm and this is 18 plus the 9 there. So it's just, just enough to go in. Smashing. Onto the drawer handles now. First the thing I need to do is just find the center. I do have a jig but it's just as easy when you're just doing one and it's the center just to use a ruler. Just do a light pencil mark. What I'm applying is Rubio Monocolor. Uh, no, no, I'm not actually. I'm using boiled in seed oil. I don't even know what Rubio Monaco is. I just heard some cool dude on an American channel say it. Anyway, yeah, so boiled in seed oil. It's a good finish for what I want. I've ummed and ahed about what I'm going to be doing. And because this is getting presented to my daughter tomorrow, I just want it done and on. And then when this is dried in a few days, probably give it a week to cure. I'll be able to lacquer on top of it and that'll do it perfect. But it does bring out the grain beautifully anyway. Right, let me put it together. I'm gonna to screw the top on, screw the bottom on. All I've done is kind of sink some holes in the bottom, screw it straight to the, to the unit, screw the top on, and then I'll get back to you with some beauty shots. The unit is now complete, it's just behind me here. Lily's just through them doors, so I'm just going to bring her through and she's going to see what I've made for her and the baby. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've got any questions, ask me in the comments. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, you can support us through PayPal, Patreon and channel membership. Right, I'm just going to go let Lily through the doors and then we'll have a good look at it. I'm not too sure. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Boom. Wow. That's so cool. Ooh, smooth. <laughs> Where? Let's come out. Yeah, that comes out. Where? <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> The, the the paint all the painted on the side drawers and everything to match. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect size for you. Yeah. Did you like the uh, legs? The frame. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Posh, isn't it? Yeah.